very kind and gentle. She has lots of little bird and mice friends, and she loves to wear glass slippers. Yell it out if you know. That's right, and here's it's Cinderella. When Cinderella comes out, we all have to Hi guys. be back. And we cheer and we show her how excited we are, and hopefully she'll stay and share a story. Are you ready? Yeah! Oh, I already know you can be louder than that. Are you ready? Good job, Dylan. Oh, I'm very good. How are you? Cinderella, I'm so excited that you're here. I was just talking to these lovely little princesses and dashing knights, and well, we were all hoping you might stay and share a story. Well, I would love to. Uh, what story shall I tell them? Well, maybe a princess story, right? Yes. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's see. How about something that actually happened to me? That would be perfect. All right. Well, you know, I didn't always have a beautiful gown like this to wear. Once upon a time. Why don't we say that all together, shall we? Once upon a time. I wore rags and I spent all of my time cleaning and caring for my stepmother and my two stepsisters. We lived in a very large house together and from top to bottom and bottom to top, I would scrub the floors. Will you help me clean? Yes, and scrub the floor. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I would wash the windows. Wash the windows. All together. Not a very pleasant person at all. Cinderella, clean my room. And the other one was named Drizella. Cinderella. Where's my breakfast? I want my breakfast. I can't eat a breakfast. You see, they were both very hard to clean. Well, I'm sure none of you ever behaved like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Once we were in an invitation to our house, it was set by the Hold on. By royal proclamation, every eligible maiden is to attend a royal ball. Hold on, sweetie. Of the prince. Oh, Dylan, I scoot back a little bit right here, sweetie. Spencer, no. I asked my stepmother if I could go to the ball and she said no. Well, that's fine. Then I asked my stepmother if I could go to the ball and she said no. Well, that's fine. Then I asked my stepmother if I could go to the ball and she said no. Well, that's fine. Then I asked my stepmother if I could go to the ball and she said no. Well, that's fine. Then I asked my stepmother if I could go to the ball and she said no. Well, that's fine. Oh, but when those jealous stepsisters saw how beautiful Cinderella looked, they tore her dress and they broke her necklace up. <laughs> I tried not to be disappointed as I watched them all go off to the ball together, but it seemed like my dreams would never come true. So I ran to the garden and I began to cry. Oh, but that's when something very strange began to happen. The stars began to shimmer and dance, and soon a voice said, Dry those tears. You can't go to the ball looking like that. And who was it that showed up? Fairy Godmother. <laughs> That's right, my fairy godmother. She told me to never give up on my dreams. And then she pulled out her magic wand. Now let's see, what were those magical words? Does anybody remember? Baby Bobby Boo! And with a bibbity bobbity boo, she turned an ordinary pumpkin into a oh, a beautiful carriage, yes, and she turned all the little ones into four beautiful white horses. Oh, yes, oh, but my dress, I couldn't possibly go to the ball in there. Spencer, no. So with a wave of her wand and a bibbity bobbity boo, she turned the rags I wore into the most beautiful ball gown I had ever seen. Oh, and those Cinderella's feet went magically appeared. What was there?
without knowing the name, the prince asked Cinderella to dance. So this is love. So this is love. So this is what makes life divine. Sweetie. Hi. Hi. And I was enjoying myself so much. I had completely forgotten about what my fairy godmother told me. That's how it started. It was the sound of the clock. Look at Cinderella. It was the clock striking midnight. I had to leave before the spell was broken. My beautiful dress was turned back into rags. So I said goodbye and I left as quickly as I could. No way, please! I heard a voice calling after me. Come here. Oh my goodness, the splendid coach had turned back into what? And the four elegant white horses, they turned back into teeny tiny little knights. Yes, I like this little dude. I'm replaced by the rags that I was wearing before. The next day. Oh, wait. The little mice turned us around and they said, Spencer, looky, looky. We want them still there on the foot. Well, the next day the prince announced he wanted to marry the young girl who had lost the shoe. So he sent the grand duke up to every house in the kingdom. If people could find the baby whose foot fit the tiny glass slipper. Wow. I'm sure it's going to fit right here on this. No, it didn't fit. It was here. Oh, it's going to fit here. Well, as you can all see, it's a very special shoe, and it's only going to fit one very special shoe. Keep your shoes on, sweetie. Maybe next time, sweetheart. Sit down, sit down, sweetie, don't go. So she locked Cinderella in her room. And I couldn't get out. But then my little mice came and saved the day just in time. They unlocked the door, so I raced down the stairs and called out, Please wait, may I try it on? And just as the grand duke was turning to try the shoe on Cinderella, the stepmother tripped him and he dropped the shoe and it broke into a million pieces. Oh no. It's all right, remember. I still have one more slipper thanks to my fairy godmother. Well, I tried it on. Mm. Everyone there saw the perfect fit. From that moment, everything was like a dream come true. I returned to the palace with the care to see my friends. Dylan. The prince was so overjoyed to see Cinderella that he asked her to marry him. And of course, I said yes. We were married in a beautiful ceremony at the palace. Even my little friends were there. Last, all of my dreams come true, and I yeah, like to Almost, sweetie. From that moment on, we all live happily ever after. Stay here.